Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today I am wearing my sock yarn blanket. It covers me up from toe to head. It's nice and warm and cozy. I love it. I knit a lot of socks. I have for a long time, almost since I started knitting, I've been knitting socks. And you know, unless you have big feet like my husband, <laughs> you always have a little bit of sock yarn left over. You get these little balls and you pile them into a bag and they collect and you look at that bag and you think, what am I ever going to do with all these little balls of sock yarn? Well, here's your answer. This, uh, I used a, a pattern called the Sock Yarn Blanket by Shelly Kang. It is a free pattern on, online. However, it's now in the web, archi web archive, the Wayback Machine. But it's pretty simple. It's just mitered squares all connected together. I bordered mine with black. Each one has a black border. And the way I did that was I just knit the first two rows in black yarn and then did the rest of the square with whatever yarn I had. It took me three years to make it. In the beginning, I worked on it a lot. You know, you, you always have a lot of mojo when you first start a project. And then I realized that it was going to be a long-term project, and I decided, oh, okay, I better pace myself because I'll either get bored of it or it'll take me eons to make, and I'll never finish it. So what I ended up doing was I spent two hours a week on it. I would force myself every week to make four blocks. Yeah, because it took me 30 minutes to make one block. So I'd spend two hours a week. I'd do four blocks. <laughs> and you can see four blocks is only one, two, not even. Four blocks is like eight inches. And it ended up being 30 blocks long from end to end and 19 blocks wide. So yeah, it took a long time, but I persevered and I finished it and I love it. And I'm actually really glad that I used the sock yarn because even though it's sock yarn and it's really lightweight, it is a warm blanket. Most of the yarns are wool. There are a few cotton yarns in here, but most of them are wool. And even though it's fingering, it's warm. Keeps me toasty. So I'm really happy with it. So if you have any sock yarn scraps, or even if you don't have sock yarn scraps, this could be like any kind of scrap blanket. You just make your squares as big as you want them. If you use worsted weight yarn and you make your squares twice as big, it would go twice as fast. Or maybe even more fast, more than that. It wouldn't take you... A year and a half might only take you a year or less. So give it a go. Now I'm going to have to take it off because I'm getting hot. Well, I hope you are all doing well as we continue through this pandemic. There are mumblings that things might be starting to reopen soon, I hope. I did... Uh, make another mask this week. I'll show it to you. I used a different pattern this time. So I found out, I have a friend who's been making masks and it takes her 
six minute, minutes to make a mask. Well, I made five masks and it took me four hours. <laughs> yeah, I don't get along that well with my sewing machine. But anyway, this one fits much better. Covers me up. And I, I used a little hack here that my coworker, uh, he actually suggested it and it works great to, you know, if the masks that you buy, the surgical masks have a little wire in the top on, over the nose to, and when you put them on, you just press it to your face and it kind of like molds to your face and that keeps it from, well, a couple of things. First, it keeps your breath from, you know, escaping out of the mask. And then because of that, if you wear glasses, like I usually do, I never wear them for the podcast, but I often have glasses on so I can see. Uh, when your breath escapes up through the top of your mask, it fogs up your glasses. So when you have the little metal piece, it holds it down, snug up against your face, and it prevents your glasses from fogging up. So I was having a lot of trouble with my glasses fogging up. So the little hack that um, I have is I took a paper clip, opened it up and straightened it out. And after I had the mask all sewn together, I just stuck it through the fabric and I did sew it a second seam here at the top so that the paper clip stays where it's supposed to stay. And it holds it, holds it and then it molds it to my nose. Works great. I have to wear a mask all day long now at my job. I work at a bank. And there are five of us there. And they don't want us to breathe on each other. So if one of us gets sick, we don't spread it to the others. So that's my mask. Uh, a couple of people have said that they want to comment on my videos, but they are having trouble doing it. So I'm going to give you a little YouTube primer today. The first thing is that if you want to comment or subscribe or interact in any kind of way, you have to log in to YouTube. So you have to make a Google account. It's free. But if you want to interact, that's what you have to do. So once you have a Google account, account, then you can subscribe. And if you have on the homepage YouTube, there's a little button that says subscriptions. And if you click on that button, then it lists all the videos that you've subscribed to. And you can go through there and find the ones that you've subscribed to. It's kind of a way of bookmarking it so that you don't have to search for it every time. You can also um, hit the notifications button. It looks, it's a shape like a little bell. And if you tap the notifications button, then it will send you a notification if, when a new episode goes live. Uh, immediate then for comments on, if you're on a computer, if you're on a laptop or a computer, the video will be at the top and immediately under the video will be the show notes. So I try everything that I reference in the, in the video, I try to provide a link or some kind of reference for you to see the name or whatever, in case you miss it. So that'll all be in the show notes, which is immediately under the video. Then on a desktop or a laptop, if you scroll down immediately under the uh, show notes will be the comments field, and that's where you can comment. Now, if you're not on a desktop, if you're on a tablet like this, on the right-hand side is a list of promotional videos. Like when you're done watching this one, you can watch one of these. And if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, there's where the comments are. Similarly, if you're on a phone, it's set up a little bit differently, but usually on a phone, the video will be here, the show notes will be here, 
And then under that will be all these promotional videos. And you just scroll through all of those other videos all the way to the very bottom of the page and that's where you'll find the comments field. They don't make it easy, <laughs> but it is there. So try that and if you have any trouble, let me know. I'm trying to figure it out. The Allentown Fiber Festival, as I have talked about before, was supposed to be the beginning of April and it was canceled. So they had an online festival instead. I already talked about the book that I got, which was Double or Nothing, the double knitting book by Alistair Post Quinn. One other booth that I wanted to visit there was a local booth to me called Red Rope Farm. I have bought from them before. They have a little flock of sheep. Most of them are Tunis sheep. And she always has her yarn for sale at her booth. It's not her main thing. She's like you go to some booths and it's all yarn with a little bit of other stuff. Well, hers is a lot of other stuff with a little bit of yarn because she only has a small flock. I think maybe 15, something like that. Anyway. I see, because she's local, I see her frequently at different venues around the area where I live. So I bought one of her skeins and I thought, well, since I see her on a pretty regular basis, what I'll do is I'll just buy one skein every time I see her. And then eventually I'll have enough to make something with. Well, the Allentown Fiber Festival didn't happen, so I wasn't able to get a skein from her that day. And I, I do want to try and support people as I can while everything's locked down. I missed her special that she was having on the day of the Allentown Fiber Festival. But then I saw on Facebook that she was having a Mother's Day sale. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this happen. So I messaged her on Facebook and arranged to get two more skeins of her Tunis yarn so that and then um, because she's local to me I went to her farm and picked it up right from her so now I have two plus one I have three skeins of her yarn now and another thing um, I've never used the Tunis wool before I have no idea how it's gonna behave or it's it smells and feels very close to the sheep. Feels kind of like you can feel the lanolin rubbing off on my fingers. And it has a sheepy smell to it. What she and some other people local to me have are just um, natural colors. She's not a, she does dye, but she doesn't sell the the yarn that she dyes and I, I know a couple at least two more I can think of off the top of my head that they just sell the natural colors and a lot of them have the white well how many white sweaters and things can you make so what I'm thinking about doing is dabbling in some hand dyeing of myself I might make one white sweater but I don't want to have two or three or four of them so I was, I've been watching like Fruity Knitting just had an episode with a hand dyer and then somebody else, I can't remember who, was also talking about hand dyeing. And I heard that you can make dye out of avocado pits. And I thought, we go through a lot of avocados in my house. Avocados pits are pretty easy for me to find. Now, they say you need like a one-to-one -one, uh, weight correlation. So, for example, if I want to dye 800 grams of yarn, then I would need 800 grams of avocado pits. And one pit, I just figured this out, is 35 grams. So to get 800 grams, I will need 23 avocado pits. 
Well, I have three. So I'll put it out there. If anybody has some avocado pits they want to donate to the cause, let me know in the comments, if you can find the comments, and I'd be happy to collect your avocado pits. Apparently, the I'm not exactly sure what the color of the pit will be, um, but it should be like a pale pink. I don't know. Because the ones, the ones I've seen, they use the pits and the skins, but I'm just going to use the pits. So we'll see what happens. Oh, I know where I saw the other avocado dying. There's a charity that I follow called Handspun Hope. It's a, it's a project in Rwanda where they employ women and they have a flock of merino sheep. They care for the sheep, they shear the sheep, they skirt the fleeces, they clean the fleeces, they make roving, they spin um, to make yarn, and then they use the yarn to make finished objects. So they sell both, they sell the roving, they sell the yarn, they sell the hats and scarves that they make from the yarn, and all of that money that they make from all of those things that they sell goes towards the... Uh, the charity, the hand spun hope, the ladies that live and work there and their children. And they were showing them dying with avocado pits. They had this big dye pot full. It had, it was the bottom of the pot was covered with avocado pits, but they didn't show the finished yarn afterwards. So darn. Anyway, I think it would be fun to try, maybe just once. I may try it and then never do it again, but you never know what rabbit holes you might fall down. Also, for a stash position, I forgot to bring a pair of scissors to open this with. my scissors. April 25th was local yarn shop day and every year for local yarn shop day Casa Pinka puts out a pattern that you can get for free if you buy yarn from your local yarn shop. Well this year as you know we can't go buy from our local yarn shop so everything was done online. My local yarn shop put up um, the, the shawl, the pattern that she did this year was a shawl with two colors, uh, like a solid or, um, anyway, a solid and a multi together. So our local yarn shop owner put together kits. She just paired up uh, yarns from her store and post the pictures online and then you could pick which one you want and she would mail it to you. So I thought, I need to support my local yarn shop while she's closed, and I will um, get this pattern in the shop. It came this week, so I'm going to open it up and show it to you. Now, this is yarn that I'm not familiar with. I just bought it based on what it looked like in the picture, so I don't know anything about this. I don't even know what brand it is or anything about it other than the color. So here we go. This will really be kind of like Christmas. If I can get it open, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's very well packaged. colors, blue and sort of a greeny. So this blue is Bedrock Collection, something fiber. I can't read it. K 
King, King Fiber, Q-I-N-G, King Fiber, soft and springy, 100% superwash merino, 100 grams, the it says the color is teal, I guess, the lighter parts are teal, and the darker parts are like navy royal or navy blue. It's it's showing up more blue on camera. Off camera it's a little bit more has more green in it. So that's bedrock. And then this is paired with Hue Loco Vintage Sock 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon. 100 grams, colorway mustard party. And it's all different. It's kind of, yeah, like a yellow green with speckles and whatever. It's definitely more green than it looked like in the picture when I bought it, which is, I mean, that's okay. So the pattern that Casa Pinka put out is called uh, Breathe and Hope, and it's a shawl with two colors. However, that's not what I'm going to use this yarn for. I need, uh, a, my coworker is expecting a baby in August and I was wanting to get yarn to make a baby sweater for her. So this is it. It'll be fun to figure out a good pattern for this. If you have any suggestions, Baby patterns that involve two colors. You know where to put them in the comments below. Let me know. It'll be fun to see what things come up and what, what I can do with it. So that's that. And what I'm working on now, I'm still working on the cardigan for my mother-in-law. If I can find it here. It's probably 70% done. The body and the sleeves are finished. So here's the back. Sleeve. Sleeve. Here's the front. So now what I have to do is the cable edging that goes it goes down, it, well, or up the front, around the back neck, down the other side, and then it's also along, all along the bottom here. So that's what I'm working on right now, is this cable edging. There. It's gonna take a while to do it. It's pretty dense cable. Plus this yarn is not my favorite to work with. It's hard, it's, it's thick and chunky and it's a dense cable and it's hard on my hands. So I can only do a little bit at a time. But I'm getting there. So that's the adventures this week in uh, Quail's Knitting Nest. How are things with you? Let me know down in the comments. I hope you are well and maybe you're getting released out of your stay-at-home order also. We are not yet, but it looks like it's coming. Take care. Bye-bye.